sinners, this is Centria. I'm bringing you another do-it-yourself project, half in progress, so it's really just an update vlog on a do-it-yourself project, which is installing a dishwasher. Um, yeah, so that wasn't so hard. Um, we also installed the microwave ourselves. That took about four hours. Um, we didn't realize there was a mounting bracket on the back. Um, I looked up a video and saw there was, and then we determined that we didn't see one on the back and so it must not be there. Then we unscrewed the top and it ripped out the mount from the wall. And then there was, uh, let me turn this over. And then there was, oh, uh, and then this microwave's a little bit taller than our old microwave. And so it overlapped the tile. And so we had to learn how to drill through tile, which isn't hard. You get a, a ceramic bit and you put a piece of tape over the tile so it doesn't slip around. And I mean, it was pretty easy to drill the hole. As far as the dishwasher goes, um, that wasn't too hard. Uh, we had a breaker specifically for the dishwasher, which we flipped off. Uh, we removed the wiring. The one part with the wiring is that um, the two ends don't show to be white or black. They're non-polarized, I guess, which is a little scary. So we don't know which one to hook back up. But again, if it's not polarized, I guess it doesn't matter. Um, but we went through all this, got it all out. We got the old one in the garage. This one's sitting right here. I have this on because I'm about to do another video on um, powdery mildew on cucumbers. So stay tuned for that. And then we're getting all into this. And then it says, get the blah, blah part, this part off of your old dishwasher. And we went and looked and we do not have that part on our old dishwasher. And somewhere in there, I don't know where, it's like, oh, the parts that are included in your kit thing. Let me flip through here. I don't know, it's in there somewhere. And it's like, here's all the stuff that's included, lots of different things. And then it's suddenly like, here's this one little elbow piece, not included. Please call Sears if you do not already have it. And it's like, why did we start if we didn't know, baby? You can kind of see him. He's right there. He's coming. There we go. You guys wanted a spot update. What? Right here. What? No, he doesn't want none of this. There's a scary dishwasher in here. Come on, be brave. Be brave. Okay, that's one. Anyway, so... <laughs> Uh, the cost for having them do the, uh, let me turn the camera around so I stop staring at it. The cost for having them do the microwave would have been $140. Considering that would might have been worth it now. Um, I'm glad we did it ourselves. We learned a lot, but it was pretty rough. But next time we do it, it's going to be a lot easier just because we understand how. Um, the dishwasher isn't so hard. Um, I'm still turning this over. Just don't stare at the camera, learn. Dishwasher is so hard is you have to turn off the power if you decide to replace your dishwasher. Turn off the power because you do have to mess with live wires. And um, turn off your water as well as your power, which usually you can do under the sink. There's usually a tube leading to drain into your garbage disposal, which my garbage disposal is broken. So that's another thing I might give you an update on real quick. And then you have a bunch of tubes <laughs> and one tubes for drainage one tube brings in the water which is usually a copper wire um and then that's really it like you can see the wires in the back there you can see the copper wire and you can see the drainage tubes right under that wire and as far as my garbage disposal either i did or somebody else did while i was cleaning my terrarium um these guys were in my garbage disposal. These are rocks. This will fuck up your garbage disposal very quickly. Um, and so what I've been doing is I went and bought a piece, which is over here, which is sort of like an Allen wrench, um, but it's specifically made for your garbage disposal. Um, and I didn't have an Allen, Allen key at the time, but we did buy an Allen key since. And then you get down here, if I can even open it. And so you have your garbage disposal here. There's, there's a little hole in the middle of the garbage disposal, which is currently 
not plugged in. Yeah, you want to unplug it before you start doing this kind of weird stuff. Now it's in there, then you can probably hear. Let me move this in closer. And this works it back and forth and lets the stuff in it move around. This is actually moving a lot better than it did last night. Before it would only go a little bit and I'd have to crank it and then you could hear the bits in it moving loose. I think it needs to go all the way back and forth like this to be clear. It's not yet clear, but let's go ahead and plug it back up and see if we actually did the final stage to fix it. Oh, probably a really weird angle. Oh my God, I'm trying to plug it in without looking. Not working. Oh my gosh. Come on, come on. There we go. Then there's a reset switch on the bottom um, somewhere. There it is. You might have heard a click. And now that's a good sound. There's still probably rocks in it. Um, sounds almost like it got, no, it's working better now. Oh, the water is off, so I can't run water into it. Um, let's do some soap. I put some oil down there. I don't know if that's actually helpful. I turn this off. I'll use my, my glass bottle with a stick of charcoal, which is what, how I purify my water. I'll pour a little bit of water down there. Oh, that is, for some reason I thought that would turn on the garbage disposal. That's a much better sound. I believe we just fixed the garbage disposal sporadically, yay! Let me show you guys where we actually got these hell demon rocks. Let me come over here. I don't know if I ever showed you in a video my vivarium. This is my vivarium behind me. Um, a vivarium is like a terrarium except that it has a water source as well. Um, let's come down here. And so right here, you can see our beta. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Look at him posing for the camera. I'm so pretty. I'm so pretty. We need to name him. And then I have three species of lizards in my vivarium, which is kind of a no-no. Um, so right here, we'll see, it's gonna be hard to show you. But if you look closely enough, you can see them all. So I'll hold it really still. You have a long tail lizard. This is an anole. This is a brown anole. I got a second male on accident. I asked for a female. Um, so that he might start fighting with the other one. There's a uh, green female anole. There's another very green, green anole. There's a very pretty long tail right there. And then I have two Bahamas which are very difficult to see, but he's right there at the very back against the back of the tank. Um, they're very shy. They're really hard to do anything with. But one thing I like is, let's put you down here. Let's see if I can do this while on camera. Let me hold this awkwardly, weird angle. Oh, he's really warm. He's usually very easy to catch. I'm trying to catch my long tail Steve. He usually walks right on my hand. No, but I think they're far too. It's actually good when they're this fast because it means I've got the heat at the at a good level. Yeah, we won't bother getting him out. Now if we check on the back here, I have humidity setting. It's currently between 50 and 60 humidity and the temperature is 80 degrees on this side. This side is probably around 70. You want to have a bit of a gradient so they can escape the heat if they don't want that much heat. Um, let's see. As far as plants go, these are just some old tropicals I had. This is an old shade plant I had. Um, this is a toad lily that I was using around the pond that wasn't working. And I also have a glass in here. So you can see that the fish is up here. I put one of my bottles in there and I had a really big one and you fill it with water and then you put it in the water and you turn it so that the suction keeps all the water in. Kind of like 
what's that old sci-fi movie, Leviathan? They're really deep under the ocean and the monsters keep like coming up through their little pools and the pools don't go up because the air pressure keeps the pools down even though they're way deep in the water. Whatever. Good movie. Really old. It's like 20, maybe it's called like 2044 or something. Somebody needs to tell me what that movie's called. So it's called a uh, fish skyscraper or something. There's a word for it. Some people use them in ponds and they make them really big and then the fish swim up them and you can see the fish from the side. Um, and then I have a, these rocks are the water table. I should have went deeper because they're touching my soil too much, keeping it a little bit too soggy. This is an old orchid that the flower died on. And I had it for about six months and it wasn't growing at all. It wasn't growing any new leaves. It wasn't doing anything. It practically was dead. I mean, it wasn't not green. Within a, a week of being in the terrarium and having the high humidity, it started to grow a new leaf. Look at it. It's that little, this one right here is new and then the little one in the middle is also new. And then this is also a smaller type of orchid plant. Um, the roots are air roots and they're inside of this little loggy thing. So we'll see how that does. And I guess I'll give you guys an update of my yard, which I've been working on. I sprayed it with an herbicide about uh, a week ago. And I probably won't talk too much because I'm really self-conscious about my neighbors hearing me talk to cameras. Um, so the yard is behind me. It definitely looks a lot greener. Um, I did get a watery back and forth swishy swishy thing. Swishy swishy. Let me see if I can do this. So let's see. Yeah, so here's the yard. And the, the weeds that have been dying the most are these little guys. And they're turning mostly brown. They have some new growth. They had little flowers on them, but they're coming right out. They're dead. It's kind of like a, I think it's like a chickweed. Honestly, these are coming out so easy. I feel like I should go through and probably go pull them all out by hand. And then um, supposedly I have Bermuda grass sod, which is what someone told me I had, um, which they said I had because they could tell by the runners. And I went and planted some Bermuda grass seed, which is what this stuff is. And then this stuff is Bermuda grass seed that died because I wasn't taking care of it properly. Here's another weed that seems to be biting the dust pretty well. Um, but overall, it's a lot greener than maybe mostly from watering it. Let me see if I can find you a Bermuda grass runner. Let's see, we'll come over here. Look at my shadow. I need to trim again, but this is a runner. So I thought these were weeds. I thought these were torpedo grass. Um, but they're actually runners of the lawn that I want to keep. <clears throat> Excuse me, that I want to keep. And so, I mean, yes, I'm going to be trimming them on the edges, but the idea is these are also running under the grass through here, filling in all the, the dead spots. And it should fill back in nicely. Moving my camera funky again. I've got a lot of weeding to do. And now I've got to go outside real quick and make my video about my powdery mildew that's killing my cucumber plants. So stay tuned for that. Um, I think I'm one subscription away from a thousand subs on this channel, so thank you guys. Um, as always, comments are great, even if it's just a quick one or two word comment. Comments let me know you care, and also are like trophies that show that you made it to the very end of the video. So this is Centrius signing out. Thanks for watching.